Hello everybody, Dacob here. Welcome back to Totally Dacob. Today we are at Lowe's hunting for Halloween. Tis the year 2024. So let's see what Lowe's has to offer. We have kind of a graveyard scenario. It is the entrance to Wednesday's school. And I think they sell the entire archway. And there's some jack-o'-lantern pumpkins uh, made out of plastic. They're not blow molds. Skulls. And the skulls are in a net of sorts. And there you can see Wednesday in the background. <laughs> you got this funny dragon hitting the head of Mickey. Now I want to say, was this done on purpose, Lowe's? Are we attacking Mickey? <laughs> is Disney... All right. Oh, this is so hilarious. Look, look That Mickey ghost is like... Um, ta anyway, so... Moving on, we have Marie Antoinette with her, well, or somebody with a decapitated head. But before we get there, let's check out the spiders. 50-inch spitter. And the spider is fluffy. You can kind of move that wire construction of his legs. I mean, it's kind of gross, though. I don't know. Yeah, it's typical for Halloween. I get it. Every, you know, we, but I don't know. I don't know what I think about these big spiders. I don't own any, so... I do like the tiny ones, the little plastic ones. Anyway, so we have the spooky town version of Lowe's, and uh, there's a lot of different... I want to say diorama type of... Haunted Living is the collection, but... They do give me diorama vibes. They do light up. As you can see, the paint job... I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I'm not the best... But it is kind of cute. I mean, which apothecary? Now, yeah, I don't know. I, in general, I'm, I mean, why not? <laughs> the witch apothecary. I wonder in which epoch or decade uh, would this actually exist? Because, I mean, if we really go back in time, if a witch opened up an apothecary, well, that wouldn't end well for her. So I'm thinking in which sort of parallel universe was it, like, super easy for them? to open up an apothecary and still be all green and ghoulish, you know. Well, anyway, I don't think when it comes to Halloween, maybe we don't really do a lot of historically accurate things. It's a lot about fantasy as well. So, sure, let's let it pass. The barnyard with skeletons and jack-o'-lanterns. That one was like $35, right? I pointed it with a finger. Here's another view of the witch apothecary not lit up and then there's also a witch boot that is also a witch house for fifty dollars was that fifty dollars i think yeah and the witch has a cat the cat also has a witch hat on there's a cauldron two skulls a little staircase that leads to the top of the boot i mean probably because she knows magic the inside of the boot is ginormous the outside looks small but I have a sneaky suspicion if we were to enter in there, hmm, the space would enhance, just like a genie in a bottle. Here we have the little spooky girl in a cloche, or as I like to call them, the glass dome. Although I'm not so sure if this was glass or plastic. In her case, she does lift up and point her hand. You see how it reflects way too much we don't get to really see her $30 for the female on skulls cloche okay female on Lowe's just delivering very sober description I like the Grim Reaper on horse with a lantern that does light up and uh, he's kind of standing on a rock. This was maybe my favorite of the props at Lowe's that day. Although I did check Lowe's online and they do have a ton more items online than they did in this particular Lowe's. I also did like the skull globe of sorts and it does turn. Um, that one was I think $35 and then the Wednesday Adams playing a uh, this is not a violin. What is it? Cello. Right. The cello playing Wednesday. Those eyes, though. <laughs> it's like, is she looking left or is she looking right? 
Then we have Enid Sinclair. So they're, I guess, $50 each. Not a big fan of those. I don't know. But then, I mean, I did like the show. Don't get me wrong. I like the Wednesday Addams show, but like not enough to want to buy, like, for example, here, a, like a body full size, human size, one to one scale Wednesday Addams doing the weird dance. I mean, cute. But do I want to have her in my living room jiggling about all the time? You know what I mean? Like, this is how I think. I, I don't know. I, I guess people buy Halloween props and decor like regular folk are gonna if they want to decorate their home for halloween they really think about just the halloween season and after the 31st of october it's game over for halloween for them right a lot of haunted mansion pieces at lowe's but for me i i like <laughs> i'm that creepy person yeah that likes to have halloween decor out all year round so when i personally think about purchasing these items and this is why I'm saying, like, don't get me wrong. It's not that I like, don't like these items. I actually like all of them, really. You know, some more, some less. The gargoyle is 100 bucks. the, the blow-up gargoyle. But uh, from the Haunted Mansion, Disney. But I um, I think long-term, right? So, so when I think about getting a life-size prop in my home, I want to keep it, like, well, not until Halloween is over, longer, you know? So if I think about, okay, let me have Wednesday Adams chilling in my living room for like 10 months straight, then I think, no, maybe it's a bit too much. I would like another type of prop maybe or animatronic that has less of a connection to a particular movie franchise. Like this spider, for example. It's creepy AF, okay. Maybe too creepy for my taste, but... Um, I prefer animatronics and props that are not connected to a movie franchise where I can use my fantasy more to think about stories about them. I loved this little jiggly guy. He laughs. He does like, <laughs> and he just goes on and on and on. And he walks all over the place. He never stops walking. Super cute. You got to kind of run after him. He's just like all over the place. He walks everywhere, bumps into things, keeps walking. It's like having a toddler at home that just learned how to walk barely. And you got to run after him everywhere. Super cute. And then we have this little gourd that uh, opens up and you have, you know, the insides of it kind of sticking out. It's rubber or latex. There's a small one, a medium one, and a large one, I believe. Although, I think I've only seen two sizes in this particular Lowe's. Loved this guy as well. Okay, he's kind of more red than orange with a candle on top. Very demonic. But here's the thing. I'm not so sure that these rubbery materials that they're made of, like, that they're going to last. Sure, a year, two, three, four, I don't know. But then they're going to start decaying somewhat, drying up, becoming brittle, maybe breaking... This is also one of the reasons why I didn't get this little jiggly guy, because I was worried that the soft latexy material would deteriorate in time. You know, usually if you buy a blow mold, they last like forever. I mean, here's a, this could be a blow mold, the stack of jack-o'-lanterns. Um, I have like blow molds from the 70s and that, you know, sure, they're a little bit maybe decolored after so many decades and they might have turned a little bit more yellow or pale, but they're still well and alive. Unlike a lot of these animatronics where the mechanics might just break down and I don't know, you know, $230, okay, for the Reaper band guy, the guy here from the Reaper band, okay. So cute, right? But like, what are we talking about? The mechanics of this thing. Like, how many years is it going to last us? And I love thinking about, you know, having these items at home. But I also love to think about durability. Look at Minnie. She got a Magenta pumpkin. And a little dog dressed as a ghost. The classic we've seen everywhere. Look at Chucky. Squid Game and Halloween too. Michael Myers and Chucky, very cartoonish looking. I would have wished for them, even though they're like blow up items, I would have wished for them to have serious faces like in the movie, not looking like caricatures of themselves. Especially 
when they're in a big size. Like, look, look at that jack-o'-lantern and that ghost. They look serious. You know, they mean business <laughs> in a good way. So, yeah, there's like different ways that I shop for Halloween items. I do like a feeling of durability when I when I buy uh, something for Halloween. And even though I might not keep the prop out all year. OK, this is a good example. This jack-o'-lantern, love it to be. I don't like that you see the light inside of it, you see, because he has a huge opening on his mouth. But the light is so gorgeous, and it's like a flickering flame type of effect, very red. Mm. And there is another one we're going to see later on in this video. So this is an elongated pumpkin, right? But then there's also the more classic rounded one, like squishy, round, squished round like the one behind this one, but also with these like extremely cut out eyes, nose and mouth. And that one I feel minus the electronics, that one would last. And I think even if I were to take out the electronics and I just kept the shell of the pumpkin, you know, even 20 years from now, it would still be awesome because that type of plastic doesn't deteriorate so quickly. This ginormous skeleton was $100 way bigger than human size and then there's smaller ones paint job is very interesting i mean they look much more realistic than the target skeletons oh while you're at it subscribe to my channel thumb up this video if you're enjoying it and be sure to check out also my other halloween vlogs and hunting videos 7.99 for this little plant a piece um including target home goods marshall's burlington ikea cvs pharmacy I mean, you name it, I've been it. I've, I've been it. <laughs> I've been in it. You name it, I've been in it. So there's this other little guy, and I thought, ooh, there's an elegated little guy who walks. But this one doesn't walk. And I was a little bit sad because I really liked his shape, and I liked his paint job. And yeah, he's also silicone-y and rubbery. But then all he does is kind of ever so slightly move his mouth. But his hands are fixed. He can't move his hands and his legs don't move. Weird. And then we had a haunted mansion from Disney, like a tombstone presentation of the, the three guys. Um, what are they? The hitchhiking ghosts? Or I don't know. They might be the hitchhiking ghosts. Yeah, they're, they're hitchhiking right now, actually. And uh, I think this one was $30. There's no prices anywhere. OK, so I had to check some prices online. And this one is still available on the Lowe's website for $30 or $35. Now, cute idea. And in fact, it's the prototype on the website is photographed much better. And like the paint job looks great because here you see the paint jobs are a little bit mm, lacking, maybe. Grim grinning ghosts. Oh, okay, they're not hitchhiking ghosts. Grim grinning ghosts. Well, whatever. <laughs> Either way, I have the feeling that even the tombstone itself, it's just like this gray and there's like no toning to it, no shadowing to it. You know, for a Disney item, I would expect it to be a little bit better. These were ginormous. OK, this white dude that looks like he came out of Game of Thrones. Um, the Night King. <laughs> I the eyes are moving. OK, well, one is kind of falling apart. So one eyeball is already kind of, well, kicking the bucket throwing in the towel, as they say, uh, while the other one is still functioning. They don't look that big when I film from this perspective, right? But bear in mind, they are like four times my height. <laughs> They're ginormous. And they are also, uh, I think, $400 a pop. Then there's this guy from the band of the Reapers. Yeah, they're $399. So we're talking $400 plus tax. Uh, sure. I mean, if you have the space, they're really, really big. I think later we're going to see just how big they are. Don't Fear the Reapers, which is a little reference to a song. The song is slightly different. It's not in plural. It's in singular. If you know, you know. Let me know down below in the comment section uh, for uh, bragging rights. <laughs> also seen in the first season, or also heard in the first season, of Chucky, the TV show. 229 for this a little nifty animatronic prop. I was obsessed with the guitar, with a bat-shaped guitar, more so than the rest of this animatronic. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching so far. Thumb up the video. 
And don't forget to push the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. As we're counting down to Halloween, I am posting almost on the daily. I want to say daily. Yeah, lately I've been posting daily. Loving the paint job on this skull. Especially from a distance, it's almost like it's growing all that oceany stuff. So I'm now moving backwards as much as I can to show you the space, right, of the um, lows that they've dedicated to Halloween. You see, it's not much, but I try to film in detail as much as possible because kind of that's all. That's the corner or the place, the spot that they gave it. So this dude talks, okay? You trigger him and he talks and he's like, it's your time now, oh, you know. Then we got for $200 the graveyard gargoyle. The wings look interesting. The gauze looks interesting. The face needed a little bit more paint. The witch, I love her hand, and um, or both hands. And as you can see, it looks like she's an amphibious creature of sorts. Okay, he his eyeball is functioning again, I suppose. But the witch, again, the hair, maybe we have to move it a little bit away from her face so we get to see her eyes. Here's that more flat pumpkin I was talking to you about earlier. This one I liked a lot. And, uh, okay, it does have all the electronics in there, and I'm trying to take it out of the box and figure out where to place it so that I can light it up. You see, it's standing amidst all the re normal fall decor. Look at that flickering red light. I mean, it changes the entire pumpkin when you turn it on. And um, I really like this one, even without all of the interiors. You know, it almost look like, looks like it's metal. And it was placed amidst the fall decor, which kind of I don't want to go in that direction because that means like Halloween is over and then oof, that other holiday is approaching. And I just, it shall remain unnamed like Voldemort, I always say, you know, because Halloween is the one. And here is Nevermore Academy. The gates that I think you can purchase. I, I believe they're purchasable. This dude's cloak, I don't know, 449 bucks. So 450 plus tax. So we're looking at around about 500 after tax. Mm, I think they, they went a little bit far with his pricing. Okay, now this is yours cruelly standing in front of these ginormous animatronics just to give you an idea how big they truly are scared as i was and just like that <gasps> the end is nigh thank you for watching subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this journey and want to see more as i post on the daily as we're counting down to halloween thumb up this video and as i always say check out my other videos and never give up on Gorish Love.